Okay, so last meeting, we discussed on how to add vectors that are perpendicular to one another. For example, we have this vector which has a magnitude of um, 4 newtons going to the north direction. And we will add that one to vector B, for instance, has a magnitude of 3 newtons due east. The resultant vector is uh, the line connecting the tail of the first vector to the tip of the first vector. Um, it's actually an arrow, so the arrowhead uh, dictates the direction of the resultant vector, the resultant R, which is equal to unknown. Since it creates 90 degree triangle, then we could use the Pythagorean theorem. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, or the resultant vector R squared is equal to the sum of the squares of the two perpendicular vectors, a squared plus vector b squared. And we could rewrite that as r is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the two vectors, a and b. So, a squared plus b squared. Last meeting, we also discussed on how to get the x and y components of a given vector or how to resolve a given vector in which in vector resolution we get the x component and also the y component of a given vector for example we have here one vector vector a the x component and the y component of vector a we could use the formula ax is equal to a cosine theta x and ay is equal to a sine theta x. Let's just review. This one is a right triangle. And we could relocate ay on the other side so that we could really picture out the triangle. Okay. So we also added two vectors using component methods. We first identified the vectors. For example, we have vector A, A, 5 newtons east, B, 5 newtons north, and then we have vector C, 4 newtons, and the theta x here is um, 45 degrees, vector D, which has a magnitude of um, 5.7 newtons, the direction is east, 10 degrees south. Then identify the theta x. So this vector is lying along the x-axis, so its theta x is 0. Since this vector is lying on the y-axis, theta x here is equal to 90 degrees. We apply the Sokatoa in getting the x and y components of these vectors. Ax is equal to A cosine theta x. In the same way, we also get the y component of these vectors using the formula ay is equal to a sine theta x. After doing that, then you get all the summation of x and the summation of y. Get the algebraic sum of this. Take note that you always need to identify the correct sign, whether it's positive or negative. If the x component lies on the positive x-axis, then it's positive. Now, bx, um, there's no x component here. It's zero since it's, it's lying on the y-axis. Cx is, take note that the x component of that vector is actually this arrow. It is lying on the negative x-axis, therefore it's negative. And then the x is positive. Okay, you just add, get the summation of x. After getting the summation of x and summation of y, then you could now get the value of the resultant vector by just applying the Pythagorean theorem. r is equal to the square root of the summation of x squared plus the summation of y squared. After getting the value of the resultant, get the direction of the resultant by um, using tangent theta x is equal to the summation of y over the summation of x, wherein your theta x now 
is the arc tangent of the summation of y over summation of x. Okay, and that is just a review of the lesson that we had last meeting. Okay, so now we are ready to discuss on how to add vectors using the sine and cosine law. As you notice here, Pythagorean theorem is applied when the vectors to be added are perpendicular to one another. That is, they create a right triangle. Now, component method is most conveniently used when we are adding more than two vectors. So, we use the component method. Okay? Now, um, we use this last method using sine and cosine law when the vectors create an oblique triangle with the resultant vector. For example, you have this vector, vector A, and we added vector B. Now, um, get the resultant of that. The resultant is from the tail of the first vector to the tip of the last vector added. Take note that we did not create a right triangle here, right? Um, we created an oblique triangle. So this is vector A, this is vector B, and this is resultant R. Now, what is this sine and cosine law? Sine law states that the ratio of any length of a side of a triangle to the sine of the angle opposite that side is the same for all sides and angles in a given triangle. Okay, considering that that is a triangle, then we could label the sides of the triangle as A, B, and C. We're in, um, we use C for the resultant. We have A and B here. Side A, side B, and side C. Okay, the angle opposite to side A is labeled as angle A. The angle that is opposite side B is labeled as angle B. And the angle that is opposite side C is angle C. Okay? Now, we have the sine law, sine of angle A over side A is the same as the sine of angle B over side B, which is also equal to the sine of angle C over side C. Therefore, you could uh, write here sine of A over the length of side A is equal to the sine of angle B over side B. And also, sine of angle A over side A is equal to sine of angle C over side C sine of angle B over the length of side B is equal to sine of angle C over the length of side C. So that is the sine law. Okay, now let's proceed to cosine law. The cosine law states that the square on any one side of a triangle is equal to the difference between the sum of the squares of the other two sides and twice the product of the other two sides and cosine of the angle opposite to the first side. Okay, so the square of any one side of the triangle, so for example, the square of side A is equal to the difference between the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So A, the other two sides, is B and C, the sum of the squares of the other two sides and the uh, twice of the product of the other two sides, B and C, and the cosine of the angle opposite to the first side. So side A, the angle opposite to side A, is angle A. The square of any one side, the square of side B, is equal to the difference between the sum of the squares of the other two sides, and twice the product of the other two sides times the cosine of the angle opposite to the first side, B. The square of side C is equal to the difference between A squared plus B squared and twice the product of the other two sides times the cosine of the angle opposite to that first side. And the angle opposite to that first side is C. Now, let's have an example. Vector A is 7 newtons 
in the direction east. Vector B is 4 newtons and the direction is 50 degrees north of west. This one, if you're going to draw here an imaginary Cartesian plane, then the angle C here, 50 degrees north of west. So from west, because of west, the angle is 50 degrees. So C, angle C is equal to 50 degrees. Now, we are getting for the resultant R, and that is C. So, applying now the cosine law, then C squared, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine C. Let's substitute the values, and that is A squared, 7 newtons squared, plus b squared, 4 newtons squared, minus 2, 7 newtons, times 4 newtons, cosine 50 degrees. Okay, so we have first 7 squared, and that is... 49 newtons squared plus 4 squared and that is 16 newtons squared minus 2 times 7 times 4 and that gives us an answer of 56 okay 56 newton times newton is newton squared cosine 50 degrees 49 plus 16 and that is equivalent to 65 newton squared minus 56 newton squared cosine 50 okay we could uh, compute that directly using our calculator but i prefer to show you first uh, to get the value of cosine 50 and cosine 50 is equivalent to 0 0.64 okay that's 0 0.64 so 0 0.64 times 56 that's equivalent to 35.84 newton squared so we have now 65 minus um, 35.84 newton squared and that gives us a value of 29.16 newtons squared. Take note that this is still c squared, right? That's c squared. And to get the value of c, then we need to extract the square root of 29.16 newton squared and that is equivalent to 5.4 newtons it means to say that the resultant now is equivalent to 5.4 newtons so this is 5.4 newtons now we are looking for the value of the angle B to get the direction of the resultant vector. To get the value of B, since angle C is already given and we already know the value of side B and side C, then we could use this formula. Sine of angle B over side B is equal to sine of angle C over side C. We are looking for the value of B. So sine B is equivalent to, we could cross multiply that one, B sine C over C. Let's 
substitute the values. B is 4 newtons. Sine C is 50 degrees over C is 5.4 newtons. You multiply 4 newtons to the value of sine 50. Or you could just input in your calculator 4 sine 50. But I prefer showing you um, 4 newtons multiplied to the value of sine 50 first. Sine 50 is equivalent to 0 0.77. So 0 0.77. I rounded off the value, okay, divided by 5.4 newtons. And 4 newtons times 0.77 is 3.08 newtons divided by 5.4 newtons. We could now cancel newtons. This is equivalent to 0 0.57. Take note that this is not yet the angle. Since we have on the left side of the equation is sine b. So we need to get the arc sine of 0 0.57. b is equal to arc sine, sine raised to negative 1 of 0 0.57. Seven. In doing so, in your calculator, you just press shift sign and then pr uh, key in 0 0.57. And that will give us now a value equivalent to 34.75 degrees. 34.75 degrees. It means to say that... Um, B there, angle B is 34.75 degrees. Okay, now what is that direction? If we draw here a Cartesian coordinate plane, um, we label that first. This is on the east direction, east. We have this south, we have here west, that is north. Therefore, angle 34, so we started measuring from east going north so 34.75 degrees north of east and the resultant now could be written as r is equal to 5.4 newtons and the direction is 34.75 degrees north of east okay so that is finding resultant vectors using the sine and cosine law. And you only uh, use sine and cosine law when you add vectors that create an oblique triangle with the resultant vector. If the triangle created by the vectors and the resultant is a right triangle, then the more convenient method to use is the Pythagorean theorem. If you're um, getting the resultant of more than two vectors, mathematically, the most convenient method is the component method. If Again, if the vectors create an oblique triangle with respect to the resultant, with the resultant, I should say, with the resultant, then the most convenient method to use is is the sine and cosine law. Okay. You could also use component method on this example. Okay. You could also use component method in this example by just first getting the x and y components of the two vectors after which you get the summation of x and summation of y and then apply Pythagorean theorem. Okay. So that's another method of solving this. But if you have a, a problem, um, like this, then you may use sine law and cosine law. That's all for today, class. Goodbye.